down to the cinematographer is critical. There's so many aspects to filmmaking. It's photography, cutting, and you've got to think in terms of images. You cut from one image to another. Images must have impact. I'm a great admirer of Freddie Young. I love, uh, well, I've always loved Zhivago. Zhivago, in the end, is not, I don't know, the, 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 the brilliance of Freddie Young in that film actually is that it's not very flash cinematography. It completely serves storytelling, a beautifully told story. And I think that, uh, um, you know, sometimes really great cinematography can get in the way of telling the story. And I think that, you know, it, when, it, when the two fuse together, you know, the, the aesthetic and the storytelling, um, it's when it really works. And then Zhivago, I think, is, an, is a classic example of that. The late Freddie Archibald Young was our greatest cinematographer. He shot over 120 films. Freddie's career in film started in 16. It wasn't until he was 60 that he began a famous partnership with director David Lean on three epic films, Lawrence of Arabia, Dr. Zhivago, and Ryan's Daughter. Each won Freddie an Oscar for his remarkable cinematography. Freddie Young left school in 1916 at the age of 14 to help support his family. I used to go to Lime Grove swimming baths every Saturday morning with my brother. And uh, right opposite was the old Gaumont studio, which was a glass house. And of course, being crazy about films, I thought to myself, it'd be marvelous to get a job in films. So one day I plucked up courage and I went over and there was a little house next to the studio, which was the offices. And I knocked at the door and a chap opened the door in a white coat. And he said, what can I do for you, young man? And I said, well, sir, uh, uh, I would like to get a job in films. He said, well, uh, what are you interested in? Uh, so I said, he said, well, you can start tomorrow in the, in the laboratory. And I started the next day developing and printing. When Freddie was 16, he developed and hand printed The Man on the Moon, the first British science fiction film. I went up into the studio as assistant cameraman. Uh, I was 16 by that time. And I, you know, pulled focus and uh, adjusted the stop and all that sort of thing. Freddie's first job as a cinematographer, Victory. He then honed his skills on white cargo. In the 1930s, the legendary producer Herbert Wilcox first became aware of Freddie Young's work. Freddie spent 10 years as his cinematographer and became a member of Wilcox's film family, along with Herbert's wife, the actress Anna Neagle. In 1939, Freddie photographed the classic Goodbye Mr. Chips, with an Oscar-winning performance by Robert. Herbert Wilcox took Freddie to America to make Nurse Edith Cavell, the only film Freddie Young would ever photograph in Hollywood. As war broke out in Europe, Freddie tried to enlist, but was told that he was too old. So he joined Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger to photograph the 49th parallel in Canada and England. Freddie, still determined to play a role in serving his king and country, eventually joined the Army Kinematograph Service with the rank of king, both to direct and photograph films with fellow cinematographer Freddie Francis. His reputation had preceded him, and he was often asked to film Winston Churchill. He always insisted on being known as Mr. Young or Sir, and, uh, you know, looking back, I don't blame him because he was so head and shoulders above everybody else that he deserved that respect. But um, during the war, I, supp I suppose we cured him a bit during the war when he came into the army with us. And then it all, it all seemed to change after that. And I think wars change all sorts of things. But after the war, Freddie became Freddie to everybody.
After the war, Freddie was contracted by the brand new MGM studios at Elstree to photograph their films and be in charge of their camera department. Freddie was also hired out by MGM to other filmmakers. I suppose it was the finest studio in the country. It had a beautiful lot and uh, 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 brand new lamps and, you know, beautifully equipped with MGM money. For 15 years. Hollywood came to Freddie Young. He worked at Elstree with directors and stars such as George Cukor, Spencer Tracy, John Ford, Vincent Minnelli, Clark Gable, Ava Gardner, and Grace Kelly. He ran his department with military precision. All the equipment was painted bright red, and uh, he was called chief. He was rather like a um, head of a school in a way, you know. The, the operator was like a prefect. He was imbued with the ambition of making English crews as good of, as, if not better, than the Americans. I heard, and later I was to see, Freddie Young line his camera crew up every morning in front of the camera and inspect them from head to toe and correct their dress if it needed to be. He was a disciplinarian, a disciplinarian in his work, and everybody knew it. Nobody took chances with Freddie. There was no gay laughter around. After shooting, yes, but not while shooting. After all, he was head of a big camera department at um, MGM, and I suppose one needed to do that in those days because, um, you know, there, were, there weren't many top-class cameramen around. Lots of people were sort of coming up, and I suppose one had to sort of keep command of the whole thing. Solomon and Sheba with Gina Lollabrigida was to be one of the last films that Freddie made at MGM. He was summoned to the front office to discuss the renewal of his contract and was offered half his as a decline in production in the British film industry was predicted. I said, certainly not. And so I left MGM. That was in 1959. And uh, the next day, I suddenly thought, my God, I'm out of work. It was the first time I'd been out of work since I started, in 1917. Do you realise that? And uh, I, I thought, oh, my God. Uh, about a out of work. In fact, Freddie's telephone never stopped ringing. One call was from producer Sam Spiegel, who asked him to photograph Lawrence of Arabia for director David Lean. Freddie's mirage sequence has become one of cinema's most remembered moments and his work on Lawrence brought him his first Oscar for cinematography. When you get to a desert and you try and shoot, you realize that for a cinematographer it's an absolute nightmare because the desert, part of the glory is that it's un untrammeled, that it's absolutely pristine. As soon as anybody walks across the sand and you've shot one take, the sand is ruined. I mean, it's, it takes a day or two to repair itself. So my regard for Freddie Young and David Lean having made the English patient, you know, multiplied tenfold. So Lawrence Arabia took two years, and it was 110 degrees uh, heat, but it was dry heat, so you didn't perspire at all. It, it just evaporated, you know. We had a, a, a big sunshade over the camera and a wet cloth on top of the camera, which acted like a bit of, a, as a bit of a refrigerator thing. We never saw any rushes. They were always flown back to England, uh, and the next day we would receive a, a, a cable to say rushes were okay. In 1970, Freddie was reunited with David Lean in Ireland to photograph Ryan's daughter. So I was amazed to get a 22-page letter from David um, begging me to uh, uh, co uh, come and photograph Ryan's daughter. 
And, but he said, but Freddie, we've got to do something new, something different. I'm afraid we're old fashioned. You've got to sort of have some new ideas and I've got to have new ideas. Because these youngsters, you know, uh, who are coming along, uh, they're doing outrageous things, you know. And uh, I keep worrying that we're getting old fashioned, all that sort of thing, he went on. Uh, but, uh, I, I said, well, you, I think you're a bloody fool, David, because you're a marvelous director and you're making successful films. Uh, why should you worry about um, these jokes? Ryan's daughter was lashed by the weather and the critics, but Freddie won another Oscar for his work. In the same year, he was awarded an OBE. I remember Chivago um, from being a wee lad and thinking um, what an epic that was. And uh, in no small part was that due to uh, Freddie Young. When Freddie turned up, whatever David dreams I dream, he's got to make it work on film. And we discussed it at length. For instance, when you've got horsemen in July in Spain, there's nearly a hundred charging across an ice field. How'd you do it? Now! People were amazed when they, they heard it was all shot in Spain. Because, you know, it was meant to be shot in Russia. But, uh, in fact, David Lee now tried to make it in Russia, but, of course, they wouldn't allow us to, 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 to do Dr. Zhivago in, in Russia at that time. We painted trees white in the winter and covered hedgerows with, with white plastic. And, and Soria, where we shot this exterior of this house, uh, was, was the coldest part of Spain. That's why we built the house there, with mel melted wax. But when it, uh, snow came, it wasn't deep enough. You could still see the furrows in the fields. So we used hundreds of tons of marble dust to, to thicken up the snow. Everybody said, would ask me, uh, what was my uh, technique? Uh, what was my plan? Yeah. I said, I had no plan. I, I, when I get on the set, I read the script, and it's meant to be day or dawn or uh, night or something, and I light according to what, what, it, uh, what it's described in the script. Uh, one of the things that David praised me for was uh, a scene where Omar Sharif saw there was a window uh, to another room and he could see a hand. Uh, this is why I lit it, anyway. Omar saw this hand, and it sort of fascinated him, and he went a bit closer, and suddenly the villain opened at the other end of the room, and lit the room up, and you saw it was Jerry Christie sitting in this chair, weeping. That was Omar Sherry's first view of Jerry Christie. Freddie constantly tried to enhance the cold look and atmosphere of the film, and even gave Omar Sharif his special treatment. He sees himself in the mirror, and he sees this ghostly, terribly drawn face, you know. Um, I put a, a white gauze uh, with a hole in it, with a burnt you know, hole mm. uh, round his face, and as he looked at himself, <laughs> Uh, I had a pup which just hit the, uh, the white gourd, yeah. dipped it up. So he got nothing but white all around him, you know. Everybody had rock salt on their shoulders and shaving soap on their beards and things. And a lot of the stuff was shot in hot weather. Everybody pretending into free. I put a faint blue filter on, uh, uh, on practically everything to make it wintry. It was my biggest challenge in, in my life, Dr. Javago, for photographically. Come on! Freddie Young's stunning work on Dr. Javago brought him another Oscar for his cinematography. I wished I'd had better education, uh, but uh, on the other hand, I, 
I got all my education through making films. A beautiful man, and a man with celluloid running through his veins, I think. Um, he's the quintessential, if you like, uh, British technician. He's what I think every post-war British technician aspired to be. Successful, canny, uh, handled his relationships well. Um, remarkable man, absolutely remarkable man in every way.